Hi there. Welcome to Lightburn. This video is going to walk you through setting up your laser for the first time, assuming that you've never run Lightburn before. So the first thing we're going to do is launch the application. After the splash screen, you'll get a basic help walkthrough that's just, you know, what the next steps are going to be. Read through this, click OK. The next thing that Lightburn does is brings you to the device discovery wizard. This is the automatic path for figuring out what type of laser you have. If you want to set up your machine manually, you can do that as well, and we're going to go through that in a moment. But the easiest way to set up a machine is to connect it by USB, make sure that it's powered up, and go through this process here, the find my laser process. So I'm going to click next, and I have a couple of lasers plugged in to my computer. So it's going to scan for them, see if it recognizes them, and it's found two. So one of them here is my Ruida 6442. It is a DSP device. The other one is my Cohesion 3D board, which is currently flashed with SmoothieWare. That device is a G-code device, and it's found them both. So I'm going to start with the SmoothieWare device. Your system will likely only have one recognized controller select the controller and hit add device. I'm going to choose this one because this is the one I want to focus on for the moment. Click add. It will now ask me where is the origin of your laser. Now with SmoothieWare and in fact with most G-code devices, that includes Gerbil, uh, SmoothieWare, Marlin, you should pick front left as the origin. If your laser does have limit switches and supports homing, Auto Home on Startup should be selected. If you have an Elix Maker device or a 3D printer that doesn't have limit switches, one of the uh, open frame machines that's just a diode laser, if it doesn't home, you may want to turn this off. You probably do want to turn that off. But for everybody else, leave this on. If you have a DSP device like a Ruida system, you will probably not see this option. Click Next. And so here it's telling me what it found. So with the automatic setup, Lightburn will query the device itself for sizes. And so this SmoothieWare device in the configuration is set to 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter. Uh, with a standard K40, that should be 300 by 200. If you have a Ruida device, the bed size will be taken from that as well and should show up here. If this is incorrect, you have the option to go back and fix that. For now, I'm going to click Finish. So now I have my SmoothieWare device. Click OK. The device is connected and homed, and you can see down here in the user interface, this is the current laser that I have selected, and this is the COM port that I have chosen. And it's automatic for many things. Uh, for some G-code devices, you will see the word Choose here, and what that's telling you is that you have to choose the COM port manually. Once you've chosen it, Lightburn will remember it for the future. So this is the user interface of Lightburn. These windows can be dragged and resized. Um, if you want to change the layout, you are free to do so. I can undock these windows by grabbing their title bar. Um, you can redock windows by grabbing the title bar of the window dragging it over another window until you see the other window change color, and then release it, and it'll redock. You can also uh, open up different windows by clicking on these tabs. You can move the tabs around if you want the tabs in a different order. Um, you can also go up here to the window menu, and this will show you which windows you currently have active down here, and I can select these to turn windows off and on. If you, for example, ever lose your cut palette window, the palette along the bottom there, if you can't find it, go back here and make sure that is enabled. A common problem for some people is that this window may end up being larger than your screen, and so the cut palette window might be below the bottom of your screen. Make sure that you don't have too much stacked over on this side. If you do, you can remove windows, undock windows, to try to vertically shorten the display. So we're going to do uh, just a quick overview of what is in the UI and how it's arranged. So over here, we have the basic tools 
for drawing. So I can use the pen tool to draw lines. I can use the rectangle tool to draw rectangles, um, the ellipse tool to draw circles or ellipses. Um, this is the polygon tool, which will let you draw uh, multi-sided polygons. Uh, and then we can create text as well. I can't spell, don't mind that. Whenever you are in a tool and you want to get out of the tool, for example, when I was in the text tool and I was done typing, I hit the escape key and the escape key first takes me out of the active mode that I'm in here, so I'm no longer typing. And if I hit the escape key again, you'll see over here, it puts me back into selection mode. When you are in selection mode, if you hit the escape key, it will unselect whatever the current selection is. So hitting the escape key multiple times in a row will get you out of whatever it is that you were into. That's also true, for example, if I'm creating a line. So I've drawn one line and now it's expecting me to draw the next one. If, I, if this was the only line that I wanted, hit escape to end the current line. I'm still in line mode, so I can now draw another line. Hit escape again, takes me out of the line mode. Now if I want to go back to selection mode, I hit escape one more time and it brings me back here. You can also just manually click on the selection button to do that as well. So I can move between these various modes. Let's see, what else? So that is the creation tools. Um, this button here allows you to position your laser head by jogging, or sorry, position your laser head by clicking on the page. So if I wanted to move my laser to wherever this circle is roughly, I can, in this tool, click here, and my laser jogs to that location. Um, you can click on corners, you can click on objects. Um, it will jog the laser around for you. These tools down here are offset, weld, um, and then the three Boolean operators, um, then grid array and radial array. We'll cover those in other videos. They are covered fairly well in other videos, in fact. Um, but these uh, will highlight when certain conditions are met. So for example, if I select this shape and this shape, now the various uh, weld and Boolean operations become active because they're now valid. Um, the things that I have selected can be affected by uh, those tools, and so they will light up. Along the top, you have uh, your various editing options or menus. Um, so I can create a new file, I can open an existing file, import artwork, um, save, save as, export. All of the tools that are here on this side are also in the tools menu. The edit menu has a few special things like undo and redo, select everything, um, a bunch of others, uh, settings and device settings, those are important and we'll cover those shortly arrangement of objects, the window menu that I touched on before, language menu, if English is not your first language, you can change the language in Lightburn by selecting one from this, and then of course the help. So quick help and notes is the first menu that we were presented with when Lightburn ran. That's this. The general usage page was what came up when we started. Um, hotkeys is the other page here that's incredibly useful and this shows you all of the hotkeys that are not really covered anywhere else. And then online documentation will take you to our online website where the documentation is hosted. A PDF documentation link will download a PDF file of the documentation and then our online video tutorials which you've probably already found if you're watching this. Check for updates is good. If I click this button, Lightburn will check to see if my current version is up to date. It is. If it's not, I'll have the option to download a new one. And then license management. This is the page where you enter your license key. So you've probably already used this page or at least seen it. If you're running the trial, you will see this and it'll say how long I have left in my trial. You can use this to deactivate your current license on the current machine, um, enter your new license, uh, request offline activation, and so on. So after you've created your device, um, 
if you need to make changes to it, you can go back to the devices button here and double click on your device in this list. And then I can pick again, smoothieware, how I want to connect to it, um, what I want to call it, how big it is. I mentioned before that because this is a K40, it's actually 300 millimeters by 200 millimeters. Change the homing and so on. Click finish and those changes are saved. And now you can see that my bed size is larger because I've made that change. You can also do a decent amount of that up here by going into the device settings. So if I click on this, I can again change my width and height, origin, and a bunch of other settings that are specific to the device that I've chosen. If you have a Marlin-based system, you will have the option to change the baud rate here. You also have options that are specific to how Lightburn works. For example, if I want it to run through white space when I'm engraving images quickly, um, I can change this to specify a speed for which it will traverse through that white space. The laser fire button, this is something that is useful for people who have a diode laser that want to turn the laser on at low power so they get a visible beam for focusing. If you have a CO2 laser, your beam is invisible. Do not use this feature, it is very dangerous. And then the return to finish position. This toggle and this setting lets you specify where you want the laser to move to when you've finished a job. So after engraving through these objects, um, Lightburn will send my laser back to this position. I can turn it off, which means that the laser will just stay wherever it finished. Or I can turn this on and I can enter a value here where I want the laser head to go when it's done. That is the very, very brief Cliff Notes version of the Lightburn UI and setting up your device. Uh, we'll cover a little bit more in other videos. Thanks for watching.